worship and praise today as we celebrate Thanksgiving. We begin our worship by rising and greeting one another with the handshake of God's peace. Us. 
He daily blesses and sustains us and all creation. Yet by our sin, God's good creation is broken. So let us confess our sin and hear again God's recreating word of forgiveness. We confess to you, O Lord, that we are naturally inclined to sin and self-centeredness. We have sinned in thought, word, and deed. In addition to the wrong things we have done, we have also left many good things undone. And like the nine lepers, we fail to thank you as we should. Forgive us, merciful Lord. Take heart. Jesus has come to forgive your sins, and he will one day return and make all creation new. With joy, I, as a called and ordained servant, declare to you God's forgiveness in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Amen. We sing the hymn of praise. <laughs>
that he might humble you, testing you to know what is in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you, and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that, as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God, by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains and springs flowing out of the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat to be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, that's the readings from Philippians 4. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication <coughs> with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, Practice these things, and God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Even in Thessalonica you sent me help for my, for my needs once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gift you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory to Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
between Christ for our Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel is from Luke chapter 17. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now, he was a Samaritan. And then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We profess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the God of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance of the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. And was crucified also for us under conscious time. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The way the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated, and at this time, we invite the children to come forward for our children's talk. Oh, you're not just going to make Miley come up by herself, are you? Come on, guys. No? I'll tell you what, Miley. Let's do it this way. You sit right there in front of these guys, and I'll do it right over here. How's that? I'm coming to you. That works for me. Is that all right? There. You got to come on down this way. I can do that. guys know what this is? You know what that is? What is it? Absolutely, a cornucopia. Now what is it for? Anybody know? Don't know? You got the name? That was a big deal right there, right? And you, any of you guys know? It does. It's whole food. What kind of food's in there? What kind? Yeah, well, that we have a yeah, that's what we're doing, doesn't it? And there's a uh, eggplant and pumpkins and that, right? So this is supposed to be a symbol of the endless supply of food that God gives to His people, and and that's a fitting symbol. Especially, I thought we might even have one here decorated. We have in the past. Um, it's a symbol of Thanksgiving time of all the crops that are coming off the fields and all the all the different kinds of products that are coming in. And, you know, we have a lot to be thankful for, don't we? What kind of things do we have to be thankful for? What kind of things? What's that? Family, family definitely. We, and we celebrate family, whether it's at Thanksgiving time or if there's special celebrations going on and the family comes together, or right? What else? What else are we thankful for? 
You know, thankful for nothing. <laughs> Family and friends. What else? Shelters. Shelters, okay. Food. 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 I'm glad many of you can make it to church. You all have clothes, <laughs> right? That's what it is. So, what else? We celebrate things, right? Oh, what? Somebody had a hand up? What'd you say? Water. Water? Definitely. We need water too, don't we? We have so much to be thankful for. And that's the that's why, especially on this weekend, we take that moment to do that. But but should we only take this weekend to celebrate Thanksgiving or our thankfulness? No. How often should we do it? Every day, in fact. And here's something I'm going to talk about in the sermon. All of you guys mentioned things and stuff. Is that all we have to be thankful for? What else might we have to be thankful for? The country we live in. Country we live in, yeah. What else? Animals that, yeah. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Oh, there you go. Cindy's, she's going where I'm going to go today. <laughs> the fact is, is that we sometimes forget. We got so much stuff. We got so much family and friends, and we live in an awesome country, like Brian pointed out. But the fact is, is that we have so much to be thankful for, especially in our spiritual lives. And that's what we're going to talk about today, okay? So before you guys go back, I'm going to have a little prayer. Lord, we thank you for all of the good gifts that you give to us, family and friends and animals and clothes and shelter. And Lord, most of all, we're thankful to you for your love and the gift of your son. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thanks for all those coming up today. Right. as far as they knew, 
they were going to live in isolation. And in fact, if anyone even came near them, they were to warn them to stay away by shouting, unclean. Well now, according to our gospel, at the border between uh, Galilee and Samaria, Jesus came. And his reputation had preceded him. Even these exiles had heard about him. They, they saw him coming and they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. The ten cried as if their lives and their bodies depended on him. And they did. Because both were just falling apart. Jesus heard their plea for mercy and blessing and, and he spoke the simple words, go and show yourselves to the priest. Now, granted, that was a strange command because the only time that a leper would go to see a priest is, in fact, if he was cured. But they go nonetheless, even with the boils and sores and oozing and all that that was going on. They go nonetheless, and as they're walking, without any kind of physical medication, no magical potions or lotions or bathing in some miracle water that's been prayed over, we're told that as they went, they were cleansed. In fact, their sickness had vanished simply because Jesus had said, go. And they trusted his authority, they had trusted his command, and the blessing was their physical healing. You know, this gift of healing, it really was amazing. They have their lives back. They can now go and hug their wives and kids for the first time and who knows how long. They could gather with friends. They could be around the community again. All because Jesus had physically blessed them. Out of the ten, though, there was one. That the physical blessing, it wasn't enough. And so he returns. He falls on his face at Jesus' feet and he starts glorifying God. The other nine, they're not looking back. They're focused on going home and the blessings that await them there. They have their physical lives back, their physical blessings, and that is awesome. But that was all that they could see. And it was good enough for them. You know, unfortunately, though, by going home, though, they, they focus, focusing only on this, this physical, the nine were going to miss out. Jesus wasn't done giving, but they wouldn't know that. You know, that's how it is for many in our world who look at the blessings of the Lord. They see and they experience the physical blessings of this world and life and think to themselves that that's good enough. I have what I need. You know, on this Thanksgiving weekend, we are given the opportunity to rejoice in our blessings. And, and the question is, where is our Thanksgiving blessings focused on? And where do we stop when it comes to God's blessings in our Thanksgiving? Do we, do we experience the, the physical and say that's good enough? Or is there more to celebrate? Will we on this weekend, will we see the depth and the height, the complexities and the simplicities of the blessings that are truly ours now and especially eternally? It's like Emerson once said, if the stars came out only once a year, everybody would stay up all night to behold them. We have seen the stars so often that we don't even bother to look at them anymore. And you know, that's the same thing when it comes to the blessings in our lives. Have we grown accustomed to the blessings of the moment and only focus on the ones we see in front of us when there is so much more to behold? You know, the truth is, is God has and is blessing you and me each and every day. We know that. I don't think that there's anyone here who can deny this truth. I mean, look around at the fields and in the barns and on our tables. Are we not living out Moses' reminder of God's goodness when he said, For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs flowing out of the valleys and hills, 
a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills can, you can dig copper. You shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. I mean, that's a perfect description. Most of that is right around us. And our bellies are not, they not only cry out how good God is, but we also feel it on our backs. We see it in our closets. We see it around our stuffed homes and garages and everywhere else that we squirrel things away. And you'll see that, that you'll see that they're overflowing. All the blessings, the physical things that are in front of us. And when it comes to even to our very being, when it comes to our health, we again, we are greatly blessed. We're even blessed with the, the very life and breath that we have. Oh yeah, our, our health goes up and down. We have our good days and our difficult ones. COVID seems to come and go along with the flus and the colds that we face. Aches and pains and struggles with catching our breath and living from that hip or knee. The pains of arthritis. These, uh, these may be some of our afflictions. And at the same time, we still know that we're blessed. We still have breath in this life, and that is a blessing. We have medications and doctors and nurses and researchers finding new and improved ways to help us with our afflictions. Who knows what the next year is going to bring with new discoveries and cures to bring even more physical blessings to our lives. And as we look, as we reflect, we, we can't help but know that we are truly blessed. If ever we find ourselves struggling with remembering our blessings, Martin Luther in the small catechism in the first article, he gives us, I tell my coffee, it's the laundry list. He said, I believe that God made me and all my cre and all creatures. He has given me my body and soul, eyes and ears, and all my members, and my reason and my senses, and he still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all that I have. He richly and daily provides me with all I need to support this body and life. But you know, even Luther's list that falls short. Does our Thanksgiving celebration, does it stop with the stuff? Does it stop with the physical? Well, for many, it absolutely stops there. Even for good Christian people who thank God regularly, our bounty count will often be on the physical. But what about the common, the everyday that is ours? The things that we can't see, but we know is ours. The things that God has given to us. I mean, are we celebrating them as well, or, or have they become like the stars, a, a taken-for-granted blessing that we can't see so out of sight, out of mind. I mean, look at the conversation that Jesus has with him and this former leper. When the former leper returns to glorify God and falls at Jesus' feet and worships, he did it because he had made the connection that Jesus is God himself in flesh. And that he had been blessed with healing and body by this Jesus. But he also knew something deeper inside of him that faith was starting to grow. And he's being blessed in spirit, a new spirit that is given to him in faith. Jesus confirms this with his words, were there not ten cleansed? Or were there the other nine? Were they not, were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And then Jesus speaks the key word in the text. Arise, go your way. Your faith has saved you. You see, in that moment, Jesus declared that this leper was given two blessings. He had his physical healing, but he also had spiritual healing. 
and salvation was the result. You know, Luther, he listed out the basics of physical blessings that are each and every day of life, but just like in our fields, in our homes, and on our backs, and on our tables, as a believer in Jesus, our spiritual lives are filled to overflowing with the bounty of our Lord's goodness. Our cups are filled to overflowing. I mean, look at the spiritual bounties that's ours. Start with Jesus himself. The fact that the Son of God left the perfectness of heaven to come here. To a world that's filled with sin and death. To bring you and to bring me forgiveness. To rescue us by taking our place under God's law and God's wrath for the sins that he carried. Not his own, but ours. And then Jesus suffered and he died on the cross of Calvary. And it wasn't for his good. It was for your good. It was for your blessings so that your sins would be paid fully so that you wouldn't have to. He let his body be hung on that cross. He shed his blood and he died there. And Jesus' death and resurrection has brought each one of you a new covenant in our world and in our lives. Jesus' victorious resurrection on the third day brought a victory and a renewed and restored and right relationship with our Heavenly Father. And with it, the blessings that we are no longer under Satan's hold. We're not under his grip. We're not under his change that would hold us and condemn us eternally. No. Instead, we're told that the spiritual blessing is ours as believers. And with that comes freedom and salvation. I mean, look at the fact that these blessings are given daily. They're given constantly. They're given unendingly to each one of you. And to all of us poor, miserable sinners who fail and fall each and every day. And yet our Lord comes to us with this forgiveness that knows no bounds, that knows no limits in this life, and he assures an eternity with him in heaven for all believers. And you know, in addition, the blessing that is ours is that daily, continually, the Holy Spirit is working through your baptisms. He is working as you hear the word of our Lord as you study it. And he works as we receive the Lord's Supper. In all of these means of grace, we are being spiritually blessed. We're being provided the forgiveness and the comfort, the hope and the peace that we need. You know, physical blessings, they're easy, especially on Thanksgiving weekend. It's easy to, like the kids did, just to start to list all the physical things, including family and friends and animals. And it's easy to list out those things because they are ours most assuredly. But you know, the spiritual blessings are ours as well. And they are not only for this life. The spiritual blessings see us through this life, even in the most difficult of times, and they follow us into eternity. So during this time of National Thanksgiving weekend, we give thanks to our loving and gracious Father and Son and Holy Spirit. We thank and praise our God, who supplies every need to us according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And it is both physical and spiritual blessings that are ours daily and Continually. For that, we're simply encouraged to our God and Father, be glory forever and ever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds rejoicing in the physical and spiritual blessings that are ours. Amen. At this time, we'll have the presentation of our offerings, and as the offerings brought forward, we'll sing our offertory prayer.
In our prayers for this morning, we lift up uh, David, who's recovering from surgery at London Hospital. We also lift up in our prayers those celebrating birthdays this week, uh, Nancy and Brian and Jody and James and Nika and Jillian and Jeremy. <coughs> we lift up those celebrating baptismal birthdays, Tom and Nancy and Bob and Don and Carrie Lynn and Hallie and Debbie. We also lift up those celebrating anniversaries this week, Devin and Jenny and Scott and Karen, Rob and Tammy, Bill and Bobby Joe, Justin and Kristen, and Tom and Laura. Please rise for prayer. We also add an additional prayer uh, for a neighbor of one of our members, uh, for Brad and Neil. Uh, as they were in a car accident this past week and are recuperating uh, from their injuries. Lord, thank you for your bountiful gifts to all of us. Thank you for the many acts of kindness to your people of all ages. We praise you for the seasons and thank you for the bountiful harvest of the fruits of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, we thank you for the church, asking that the message of salvation would be joyfully proclaimed throughout all the world. Bless the work of missionaries, teachers, health workers, and all others who share their faith in countless ways. Lord, in your mercy, we thank you for the world and pray for the nations. Continue to give us all things needful, and grant that we be good stewards of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for the gift of our families and everyone in them. Give them safe travel to and from their destinations. Bless the time families will spend with one another over this weekend. Help us to be truly thankful, not only for the material blessings in our lives, but for the people who share our lives with us. Grant that our homes be places of love and care. Lord, in your mercy, hear Lord, we lift up our police, firefighters, first responders, EMTs, and military personnel and their families who can't be with their loved ones over the Thanksgiving weekend. May they know your protection, joy, and thankfulness, even in these times of separation. Lord, in your mercy, hear we thank you that your care embraces all people as we remember those with special concerns and needs, including the ill and hospitalized and those shut in. We especially lift up David and, and Brad and, and Neil, and we lift up uh, Leland, and we lift up all in our hearts. Strengthen them, uplift them, encourage them. May patience and hope reign in their time of need. May they and their families look to you for their help in time of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, we rejoice with those celebrating birthdays, baptismal birthdays, and anniversaries this week. We thank you for the blessings of the past and entrust them to your future care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. These things and whatever, whatsoever else we should have asked of you, Grant us by your mercy, O God, for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. celebrate Holy Communion. Hear Luther's admonition. I exhort you in Christ that you give attention to the testament of Christ in true faith. And above all, take to heart the words with which Christ presents his body and blood to us for forgiveness. That you take note and give thanks for the boundless love that he showed us when he saved us from the wrath of God, sin, death, and hell by his blood. And that you then externally receive the bread and wine that is his body and blood as a guarantee and pledge. 
Let us then in his name, according to his command, and with his own words, administer and receive the testament. <laughs>
we rise for our post communion prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, as Jesus healed all ten lepers, so you graciously provide for all of us gathered here today. You bless all creation with your gracious provision. Guide our hearts and minds to acknowledge all your gifts and to live in constant thanksgiving to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Uh, also, we have sign-up sheets up for trunk or treating, which is happening on Friday the 27th at the end of the month. So if you would like to decorate a trunk and hand out some treats uh, to our uh, kids that come here to design, as well as the community kids that come, uh, please sign up just so we know how many uh, trunks we'll be having. And the next day will be our Women's Fellowship Thrifting in Strathroy and wherever else we decide to go. Uh, we're going to have lunch at the Clock Tower in Strathroy, so please sign up if you would like to join us for thrifting. I think that's all I have for now. Thanks. Seeing nothing else, have a blessed rest of the Thanksgiving weekend. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Amen.